All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the Harris corner detection. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we can detect some of these corners here on the right. So what is Harris corner detection? It's a method to find corners in an image. So here you can see these are some corners that it has found. And we'll see how we can actually do that in code later on and describe how it works. So why do we need Harris corner detection? It's good for um, feature detection. Um, and we'll talk about features a lot later on. But essentially, features is what lets you distinguish certain um, uniqueness of an image. And you can also you know, correlate two different images together based on the similarities of the features. Um, it can also be used for things like calibration because maybe you want to detect um, certain points on a grid. So how does the Harris corner detection work? The way it works is that it tries to maximize the equation here by finding the most change in all directions. So you have this function here, and if you imagine if you were to shift it in both the u and v direction, so essentially every direction, and you want to see um, which one will give the most change, then that will usually correspond to a corner. So um, you could simplify this equation by writing it out this way. And in practice, most people just look at the x and y gradients, which is the ix and iy. So here we create uh, different images. Here we have a product of ix, x and y, y and y, and then x and y again. These two are the same. So the idea is you have these images, and you're going to sum up the different windows of those regions. And that will give you your M matrix. And based on the M matrix, we have like a response uh, equation. And that is calculated using this, the determinant of M minus K. This is empirically determined. And it's typically between like 0 0.04 to 0 0.06. And the trace. So the the determinant is calculated using the product of the eigenvalues, and the trace is the sum of the eigenvalues. So the idea is, you have when r is small, when uh, the two eigenvalues are small, then the region is flat. When one is bigger than the other, then it's edge, and then when both are large, then it's a corner. So the idea with eigenvalues is, you know, if you have a distribution that looks like this then you have like one big eigenvalue and one small eigenvalue. So that's that's this case. So that typically, um, that would correspond to an edge. And then if it's very small, both eigenvalues are small, then that could be uh, flat. And then if everything is large, then most likely you have some distribution that looks like this. Then that would be corresponding to a corner. Okay, so. You can imagine these as being the, the intensities that you see. So um, if you plot this out, maybe this is like um, ix and iy. So you can see there's a lot of change in the x, a lot of change in the y. So you might have like big eigenvalues for both directions, and that will correspond to a corner. So that's the general idea of the Harris corner. And we'll now see how it works in code. OK, so as usual, let's go ahead and import some of the modules that we will be using. Import cv2 as cv, import matplotlib.py plot as plt, import numpy as mp, and then import os. So we're going to call our function uh, Harris corner. And then we have our if name equals main here, and call our Harris corner. Then what this will allow us to do is um, we'll run our function inside here. We're going to have roots equals os dot get cwd, and then image path equals os dot path dot join. We're going to pass in roots, and then demo images tesla dot jpeg, and we have our image equals cv dot read. We're going to pass in the image path. And we're going to have an RGB version, cv.cvtcolor um, image. And then we're going to have cv.color.rgb. 
color uh, BGR to RGB. And then we have a gray version, cv.cvt color image, and then cv.color uh, BGR to gray. Okay, so now we have another gray equals, we're gonna do a data type conversion, mp.float32, uh, and we'll pass in our gray image. So plt.figure, let's go ahead and look at our image. So plt.subplot of 131, and then plt.show, um, and we'll pass in our grayscale image, C map of gray, and then plt.show to show the image. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see this is the grayscale image that we're working with. Now we could go ahead and run the Harris corner plt.subplot132, uh, and then we're going to define a block size of five, which we'll use for the Harris, and then a Sobel size for the gradient calculation of three. And k is our value that we could play around with, but we'll start off by using 0 0.04. And now we could call the Harris using cv.corner uh, Harris, pass in our grayscale image, the block size, and then the k size, and then the k value. Actually, this, this we call Sobel, Sobel size. Okay, so that's our Harris, and we do plt dot um, show and pass in uh, Harris. Now, if I run this, we should see the Harris response. Okay, so notice that it looks like nothing at first, but if you zoom in, you can see there's like bright spots. So these bright spots will correspond to um, areas that it thinks is a corner. So you could zoom into a Tesla logo here, and you can see that, you know, this is the response that I calculated. And you can see it's like a big blur. You could use things like um, non-maximal suppression to find the peaks in the region. Um, but this Harris corner method here just gives you the raw response. And we could try to plot the response more clearly on our image by using PLT we'll make another subplot. Um, but what we're gonna do is say the image, and then we're gonna do some comparison. So if it's bigger than 5% of the max, so that will kind of pick out some of the key ones, we're gonna mark it with this color, red. So now I'm gonna do plt.show, and then our image. So if I go ahead and run this, we should see our image marked with red where it sees corners. So obviously there's a lot of bad ones, but or bad or good depending on your point of view, but at least here in the logo, you can see that these are the corners that it has detected, okay? And if you look back in some of the trees, you can see that it has identified some of these areas as also um, corners. Okay, so that's the idea of Harris Corners, and if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.